The fixtures come thick and fast this time of year. We roll on to another weekend in the WSL and we have lots to get through. It's third against second as two of the title contenders clash at King's Meadow. Liverpool again go in search of their first win of the season. West Ham, the visitors. And table toppers Arsenal take their free scoring form to Reading. Which is where we are. Welcome to Adams Park, where Kelly Chambers' Reading side are hoping to stop the frightening strike force of visitors' Arsenal. Former England defender Laura Bassett is alongside us to analyse how they get on and all the rest of the WSL action. And we start with a clash of two off the heavyweights as Manchester City with the visitors to Chelsea. Here's England. Oh! Decent hit, wonderful goal. Commentary comes from Lucy Ward alongside Adam Somerton. So little between the title contenders, both in terms of points and quality, but only one of them can prevail, and this another key head to head. Emma Hayes has made one change to the side that started their 6 0 win at Birmingham. Drew Spence drops out with Erin Cuthbert restored. The Scotland international is one of seven Chelsea players named in a list of the world's top 100 female footballers this week. Nick Cushing has made just one change to the 11 that began Manchester City's 1 0 win over Liverpool last weekend. Jill Scott is back in the starting lineup today. Former Chelsea player Laura Coombs drops to the bench. Six of the 11 have started every league game this season. Today, it's another one of the key head-to-heads in the WSL this season. That lovely back heel, and England wants it, and England gets it, and still she goes on. Good save by Roebuck. Look for all the world, like that was about to be 1-0. An excellent save that is from Roebuck. We've seen a lot of this keeper this season. There's a lot of mutual respect, isn't there, between these two sides from the way that both teams have approached this game. Chelsea in a rush, England with the shot, good save by Roebuck. Not for the first time in this first half, she comes to Manchester City's rescue. And that all came from a little bit of sloppiness on Manchester City's part. Again, Roebuck saves them. Mielda, oh, off the crossbar. Chelsea really asking questions at the end of this first half. Tell you what, that looked in all the way. It's a terrific strike, just stays too high. Beth England leading the charge forward here. There's the ball inside to G. G with the shots and off the post, they hit the frame of the goal for a second time here. Chelsea, what a good effort that was by G. Again, G at the centre with everything Chelsea does. Batman. She's played herself into trouble here. Can Manchester City capitalise? Still got players forwards. Oh, what a brilliant finish! Such a cultured shot to put Manchester City into the lead here. And it's Caroline Weir with a gorgeous finish. She watched it all the way in and just guided it past. She didn't really need that much power. She just needed to send it in a different direction to where Berger was. Mielda blocked by Hemp. Well, they got in each other's way there, and England with a shot on the turn, and Batman was there, fantastic block that. Horn it was who threw herself in the way of it. You see there, Steph Horton, that's in the back of the net, isn't it? If she doesn't do that, it's terrific play. Batman. As England to her left, Batman drives on, they're backpedalling! Brilliant save! Oh, what a stop that was by Roebuck to deny Batman. And that was going in the corner, wasn't it? Terrific save from the young goalkeeper, and she's been excellent all afternoon. Yelda. Good ball inside to Spence. Spence with a measured pass. England with the shot. Deflected, and it'll be a corner here for Chelsea. On the edge of the area, another chance, another set piece for Chelsea. Chelsea seeking an equaliser. Comes out here to Mielda, and now G will strike it! 
and she's there again, the goalkeeper, but this time, Roebuck is finally beaten. And it's the woman in form, Beth England, who levels things up here. G and Beth England combined. It's a strike from G that she couldn't get enough away. Good she, Ellie Roebuck, and right on the spot, Beth England. And she's brave as well, isn't she? She's played so well today, the pair of them, G and Beth England, and she deserves that. Robert got a touch, and England's there again, and it's turned in! What a turnaround here from Chelsea! Into the final ten minutes, and they've gone from one down to two one up. It's Mielda, but again, Beth England's involved, isn't she? It's a strike in there, causes problems. It's Mielda in the end that got a touch on it. In it goes with pace, and thump back in again, and it's bobbling about in there. And there were one or two claims for handball. Amy Fern, the referee, not interested. And there'll be no second look at it. And the header comes off Carter, and it will be a corner for Manchester City. Oh, how must the nerves be of the Chelsea supporters here? In goes the corner, and they're struggling to get it clear. And that was almost off the line. Desperate defending here by Chelsea, but they've got the job done. They've seen it out. Ten wins in a row now. Forever Hayes' side. Chelsea sends the opportunity this season, clearly, to get their title back. And that is a massive blow to Manchester City's hopes of winning the WSL. To come here and, and go 1-0 up gives you a great chance of winning the game. Um, we've won games like that here before. We've also lost games. It's an it's a incredibly difficult place to come. And in the end, the pressure, we probably allowed them to put to, to put us under too much pressure and the, and the goals came. But, yeah, disappointed. We showed a resilience again in difficult circumstances. I thought it was thoroughly deserved. I thought we should have ended the game sooner, but I'm just pleased with the way we bounced back. Well, a really entertaining game in front of another bumper crowd at King's Meadow. Chelsea had to show some resilience for those three points, didn't they? They did, and they've, they've already shown this season they've done it against Arsenal and they've done it today, today against Man City. And, you know, the fact that they haven't beaten Man City since 2014 and they've done it today, you know, they'll be full of confidence and, and you know, really pleased with themselves. Yeah, they will indeed. Having to come from behind as well. Two really good goals in the second half, but... Will Ellie Roebuck be a little bit disappointed, perhaps, in her contribution with these goals? Yeah, definitely. I think I think that her job is to be dominant in the six-yard box. And, you know, on the first goal, she does parry it back into that danger area where players like Beth England are lurking. So that's a big learning curve for her today. Beth England again heavily involved in the second goal. I'm not sure how much Marin Mielda knew about that one. <laughs> no, but she's a right place, right time, and I'm, I'm sure she'll, she'll, she'll take all the credits and plaudits for that one. Oh, absolutely. And it could have been perhaps even more for Chelsea. Ellie Roebuck putting some fantastic saves in to deny Beth England another couple of goals. Yeah, that's right. I think when the ball changes hands, you see Beth England, you know, she, her desire, she wants to be involved in every single attack, you know, how, how quickly she accelerates. You know, Chelsea so far this season have been so dangerous on the counter-attack and she just... Beth England's playing with such enthusiasm, energy, and every time she goes forward and every time the ball's at her feet, she looks like she's going to score and, and cause problems. And, you know, she's a great asset so far and she's in great form for Chelsea right now. Yeah, she's having an absolutely fantastic season. There was a big talking point at the end of this game. Could Manchester City have had a penalty? Yeah, I think so. I think it's a great shout for a penalty. I think um, as soon as the ball struck, it hits... Erin Cuthbert's arm. Um, in defence to her, she does very well to disguise it with her foot. I think she's trying to, you know, I don't know why she doesn't clear it properly with, with her foot in the first place and then falls to the ground. But, you know, as Man City players, they must be really frustrated that that isn't a penalty. Does VAR give the penalty there? If yeah. We had the technology. Yeah, with the new rules, like you say, I think, yeah, I think it is given as a penalty. Oh, frustration from Manchester City in that regards. But the result did put Chelsea top of the table, just above Arsenal. But they came here full of confidence after last week's goal fest. Could Reading stop the Gunners' firepower? Lisa Evans. Oh, and it's 2 0. Here's Miedemar. Miedemar again. Running out of words, really, for Vivian Miedemar. Nobs. Miedemar involved in all ten. Mitchell, 11. Brilliant.
brilliant from Arsenal. Commentary for this one comes from Jane Ludlow alongside Robin Cowan. Arsenal coming to this one of the most feared teams in all of football following that 11-1 victory against Bristol City, the biggest victory in the whole of Women's Super League history last weekend. Oh, that's a mistake. And it's Farrell Williams in here. How on earth did that not go in? She takes that first touch as it comes across. You're great pressing, by the way, from Redding, you know, high press, poor from Arsenal perspective. A great first touch for Farrah, but could she have shot earlier? I think that's what I would have asked her. Oh, given away, that's good anticipation by Kim Little, and now Arsenal are away here. It's Miedemar! It's 1-0. Arsenal's best foray forward ends in a goal, and she doesn't need another opportunity. Vivian Miedemar, deadly once again. Van der Donk's on the ball, you're turning and facing forwards and running at people, but who is there again? It's obviously Miedemar, awareness, you know, from Van der Donk. It's great seeing her teammate on the left here, but what a great finish to dink it up over Grace Maloney. Mead pulls it all the way back for Little. Williamson, Little, Nobbs, here's Kim Little! Oh, how about that? That is remarkable from Arsenal. Kim has acres of space on the edge here. They need to be pressing higher, Redding as a team here in these situations. But good interplay, what a great touch on her chest. And then the decision to take that early shot, fantastic. Miedemar's pass does find Lisa Evans. Miedemar with the cross in, Van der Donk off the post. Good opportunity here for Van der Donk, unfortunately, you know, catches her on her shoulder rather than clean on her head. Oh, this is a good opportunity. Farrell Williams took it early and wasn't far away. Well, there are not many players who you'd back to pull that off. She is one of them. Picked up by Mead. Miedemar. Give and go with Jordan Nobbs. Miedemar. Good save, Maloney. Not the greatest of clearance from Akerlan. And so close. Lisa Evans just wide of that far post. Good opportunity here for Miedema. Ma making an interesting decision to kind of toe punt to you, and why not? You know, that space was there and, and available, but Maloney keeping that one out, and Lisa Evans, I believe, having that opportunity that's just ended up going wide. Into stoppage time. What a ball that is, Van der Donk. Miedema. Beautiful! Good, good awareness to see her in the first place, um, but great one-touch finish. Full-time, Reading nil, Arsenal three. We know every time we come here, it's very difficult um, from a physical perspective. Also, we can't, uh, they don't allow us to play the game we want to play and uh, we have to adapt. Um, yeah, it was a little bit messy at times, but, um, you know, we got the result. We have to take the positives from today. We've stopped a top, top side, um, creating the chances that they've been creating week in, week out at the moment. And we just need to build on that now and keep and keep going. Well, there's three points and three goals on the road for Arsenal. Delighted to have birthday girl Jordan Nobbs alongside Laura and myself. Happy birthday, Jordan. Thank you very much. Nice way to celebrate it with three hard-earned points. Yeah, uh, we knew it was going to be tough today and um, it was a bit scrappy, but, um, you know, that's what we've got to do in some of these games and um, just glad we got the win. Clinical as ever, particularly from Vivian Miedema again up front. She's catching up with you. <laughs> WSL goals count. Yeah, I've had a lot of tweets saying uh, what numbers were on. So uh, she's just an incredible player. And, um, you know, here again, I think the players that she has running forward, um, you know, she's obviously always our target. And as soon as she gets a touch, you know that it's just gone in. And she's been um, obviously phenomenal for us this year. And then again on the corner where we're always looking to play. I think that's a, the Arsenal way. And um, I've given Kim a bit of a, a tough one here to deal with. <laughs> Do you not mean that, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think she's one of the best in the world and uh, deserves a little bit more gratitude. Uh, 
and then finally our last goal. I mean, for Dan van der Donk to, to see that vision is incredible. And I think the keeper's given Viv a bit of an easy option there to dink it. But again, um, she's one of the best to finish that off. Yeah, she really is you know, having a fantastic season yet again. But Laura, there were there were chances for Reading and, and the majority of them fell to Farrah Williams. Yeah, that's right. And Reading actually started the game the better and, and Farrah Williams had a great chance within the first five minutes. And I just think that, you know, maybe she'll look back at this and, and perhaps... T- realised that she could have actually took it earlier and I think if she had took it earlier then you know she probably would have hit the target and, and got themselves ahead so but yeah you're right a lot of responsibility does lie on Farrah Williams's shoulders um, I think she knows that she relishes in that but you know it is a lot you know they are missing that out and out striker that you know I'm sure they would love to have Miedemar in their team because it would have made <laughs> it would have made a hell of a lot of difference today yeah you have to be clinical really against teams like like Arsenal and it does put you back on top of the table did you know what had happened in the the game earlier in the day before you went out today and you knew that you would have to, to win to go back up there uh, yeah we did but you know, we're just taking every game um, as it comes and uh, we just need to keep winning and uh, performing. So I think it's down to us to keep tallying up the points. Yeah, well, you're certainly doing a very good job of it. Quick word on Joe Montemuro. He's going to miss the next couple of games. Will that be a problem? Uh, no, I, I hope not. I mean, obviously, we're, um, we're all behind Joe and, um, you know, where he needs to go with his family. So um, he's an incredible manager and we have a good support system behind us that will take us into the next few games. But, they're, you know, again, they're going to be big games where as players we need to step up. Well, we wish you all the very best for the games to come and have a lovely birthday Thank celebration tonight. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Well, Manchester United's winning run came to an end last weekend against West Ham. They were hoping that they could bounce back on home soil this weekend. And it was a return to the Lee Sports Village for Willie Kirk, who took his Everton side there today. This is the first WSL meeting between these two teams. They have met twice in the Continental Cup group stages last season and this season. Both those matches, Manchester United ran out 3-0 winners. It will be Kagman with the corner for Everton. Is there going to be early drama here? Corner comes in. Erbs has flapped it and it's gone into the back of the net. Well, they're all celebrating there. McGill celebrating, Finnegan's taking the hugs off of some of her teammates. Erbs as well, a United keeper, might have got the final touch as Kagman's corner came in. Sigsworth moves into dangerous territory. It comes in and flicks into the back of the net by Lauren James. What a start we've had here at Lee Sports Village. James back in the starting lineup and back among the goals this afternoon. Perfect delivery by Sigsworth, and Lauren James is not going to miss that. Galton in support, Zellum also there. James goes in alone, and was she brought to the turf there? She was indeed. Referee points to the spot. Well, she causes problems for every defence she comes up against, Lauren James. Clear foul and Katie Zellum scored a penalty against Everton in the Continental Cup. Can she do so again now? Oh, well, she sneaks it in. Didn't have much power. Perfect accuracy, though, just inside the post. Rolls United into the lead. Works for him for the spot. Oh, good save that by Corpella. Palms it over the bar. United have pretty much dominated this first half. James gets a shot away and into the back of the net. Sensational finish by Lauren James. Fifth WSL goal of the season. Manus will get there first for United. Back to Earps. Oh, careless pass by her though. And that is flicked over the top of Earps by Kelly and headed off the line by Millie Turner. Finnegan. Oh, loose pass out of defence by Finnegan and Leah Galton seizes onto it eventually and can she get the shot away? Just wide of the far post. Decent effort that by Leah Galton. 
think it was very important for us to to get these three points. Um, we wanted to win this game, and obviously the way we started was not the way we planned it, but um, it's a good thing that as a team we bounced back from that, and even in the game we could turn it around. Uh, we spoke about it before the game, about uh, taking the lead and then, and then seeing how they would react to that. Obviously they reacted very well to it, and, uh, and I, I just felt that we were a little bit naive in terms of that, that three, four minutes after we'd scored. Well, it was a return to winning ways for Casey Stoney's Manchester United and Laura, Lauren James right at the heart of everything for them today. Yeah, that's right. And we saw all different types of facets to her game. She's got everything, you know, all the different types of goals that, that we've seen her scoring so far. Um, I think, you know, we certainly see her desire to get to the near post. In women's football, if you get to the near post, you're in control of the situation and you can get yourself an easy tap in like that time and time again. She's got great feet, she's got pace, she's got strength as a defender. She's a tough one to come up against, isn't she? She really is. She keeps the ball so t close to her feet that she can manipulate and go either side at any time. So as a defender, it's really, really hard to gauge and really hard to put a tackle in. And Casey will have been delighted as well to see her have a performance like she's had today because she did come into this league with a lot of expectations and she's still very young. Yeah, that's right. But we've certainly seen that she's ready for this level. But also what I like, what Casey's managing her and the situation very, you know, very well because, you know, she's taking it in games, out games and, and she's just letting her grow and develop naturally, which, which is really, really good. Yeah, big win for Manchester United. There was one WSL game during the week, Birmingham and Spurs sharing the spoils. Birmingham were away at Bristol City today, but we start our roundup with Spurs against Brighton. Out to Neville, cuts in fields. That's a promising ball forward. It's being chased by Furness. She has Dean to her left-hand side. Furness goes for the shot herself, and it's straight into the gloves of Megan Walsh. Dean might latch onto this one. Rihanna Dean now racing into the box. Rihanna Dean to give Tottenham the lead. Rachel Furness looking for options. Plays it off. Kirk Dyke comes back to her again, spreads across to Neville. Neville tries to poke it in the block on the line and does it go into the second attempt? It is finally in. This could be a chance for them to extend their lead. Davison playing the ball into the path of Furness. Furness edge of the D. Furness goes for a shot. It's spilt, comes back to Dean, but collected by Walsh at the second attempt. Longhurst out this side for Kavama. And now it's West Ham's turn to ask some questions. Oh, and Kitchen can't keep it out. And Adriana Leon can celebrate a goal with West Ham United's first attack. And that's Roberts. And what's the call here? Oh, goodness me. Her referee's given a penalty. It's Lawley, and she's put it wide. Becky Jane. This looks a little heavy, but she's managed to find Lawley. Mel Lawley, deflection on that, it's there! Finally, Liverpool can celebrate a goal. Just the lift they needed, 1-1. One, one. And it goes up towards Bradley Auckland. Hunter on, swimming, kick! Oh, that was the moment. And that will be that. Walker again, just trying to feed it into the box. There's bodies there. It's a lovely finish into the top corner. Guided in by Lucy Whip. And Birmingham have the lead in the opening five minutes or so. Collected, though, by Arthur. Ball into Grant once again off the top of the crossbar. She fancies her chances today, I tell you. Walker has support on the edge of the box from her captain. Staniforth lays it off. Oh, it's a howler from the keeper. Celebrations for Abby Grant. A huge error from the shot stopper, and Birmingham can double their advantage. 
So this is what it all means for the Barclays WSL table. Arsenal stay top, two points ahead of second place Chelsea, although Emma Hayes side do have a game in hand. Manchester United are back into the top four after their win over Everton. And at the bottom of the table, Bristol City and Liverpool both still looking for their first wins off the season. Liverpool propping things up in 12th place. It's another tough afternoon for Liverpool, Laura, right down at the bottom of the table there, but what a chance they had at the end to sneak three points right at the final whistle. I know, Courtney Sweetman-Kirk had only just come on the pitch at 86 minutes as well, so, you know, should we ruin that chance? I don't think she realised that anyone, that she had that much time and space and that she was left a mark in the box, but what a great chance that could have been for them to get their first three points. It's really difficult for Liverpool, isn't it? They just, it feels like they're not far away but they just need to get that first win. Yeah, they do. But I think they've shown great character today to go behind so early on in the game um, to get themselves back into the game. And, like, you know, they, they could have took all three points. But, you know, I think, like Vicky Jepman was saying, it's just the performances. They, you know, they're getting their indicators. They're performing better and better each week. So it's only a matter of time. Bristol City as well, still looking for a first win. How tough is it when you're down there and you can't, you just can't get the three points, the one that might propel you on to a little bit of a run in form? You're right, and I think it's really difficult. And I think then you start looking at other excuses, maybe injured players. You know, you just it all seems like it's all piling on top of you. Um, but you just have to keep working so hard on the on the training pitch, keep the faith, keep believing in each other, staying together as a, a tight unit, and, and believe that that they, those first three points will come. And it does show you just how tough. The WSL now is when you, when you look at teams that have come up from the championship, they've managed to piece together a couple of wins, a couple of points, and you really can't afford to get sort of uh, to drop away at the bottom, can you? No, that's right. And I think certain managers um, previously would have come into the league, oh, this month we'll get six points or not. I don't think you can't predict anything. And I know it's a cliche and you hear all players and, you know, Joe and Jordan here today at Arsenal saying they're taking each week, each game as it comes. But it really has to be like that in the WSL right now. Yeah, another really, really entertaining day in the WSL. There is a lot more football to come for you on the BBC, though. We'll have live commentary from West Ham as they take on Arsenal in the Premier League tomorrow. That's on BBC Five Live from 8 o'clock. Boxing too. All the reaction from the Ruiz Junior Joshua fight with Costello and Bunce is available on the BBC Sounds app. You can keep up to date with all the Champions League goals as they go in on Five Live final score on the BBC iPlayer on Tuesday. And we'll be back next week for the last women's football show of 2019 on BBC Four at 7 o'clock. That's quite a scary thought, the last show of 2019. <laughs> Christmas is coming and you're going back to the, the warmth. Yeah, that's right. It's been, <laughs> my toes are far too cold. <laughs> I need to warm up. Yeah, that's certainly a cold one today. Laura, thank you very much for joining us. All the best back in sunny Orlando and here in the freezing cold Adams Park. It was Arsenal celebrating three goals, three points and back to the top of the WSL. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.